Welcome to a live session with me stitching in this leather zip wallet. Okay, there's a new settings on YouTube live since I did it last. That's how long it's been. Welcome to the workshop. So I'll show you what I'm doing first of all before I uh, carry on stitching here. This is a leather zip wallet. It has an excess on it which needs to be trimmed up after stitching obviously. And if I open out, you can see this is how the pocket works. We have a little gusset there on the front and it's lined with leather on the inside. So we have grain leather here. We have grain leather here as well. And on the other side, this will be in fact a cash pocket. So it'll be a zip pocket for coins and all small, sorts of small items like that. Tokens, receipts, and behind it will be a cash pocket. So talking foldable bills any kind of paper money and what is going in where do i have it it's over here this is the zip wallet that i'm working on at the moment so this is an ostrich zip wallet and i'm building the interior for that so this piece here will eventually be going onto this lining which will then be installed inside the zip wallet so lots of things to do just going to adjust this so you guys can see better uh, if you have any questions at any point, feel free to ask away. So it's been a long time since I've actually done a live in the workshop. So apologies for that, because I know a lot of you liked the lives that I do. There's an internet issue, but now I have new internet, brand new, up and running. So we are all good. So if you're watching from anywhere around the world, let me know where you're from where you're watching from. So I'm stitching this in with uh, Philly Chinois linen thread. This is 530, yeah, 532. And the stitch spacing is 2.7 millimeters. So quite fine. I've kept it fine on purpose. So for things like wallets, I much prefer using a smaller stitch spacing, especially if you're doing really detailed work with micro gussets and small zips and various different compartments. I find a, a finer stitch just looks a little bit better. So this particular seam here, I'm actually stitching in the zip tape and it'll be continuing all the way around until I get to the other side, which is where the gusset is. So on a, it's not overly complex as long as you stick to a preferred, you know, a certain method, the way you're stitching it, a sequence is what I'm trying to say. You wanna make sure that you stitch the right parts at the right time. That's where the details lie. Guys, let me know if you can see okay from where you are. I've moved the uh, camera a little bit further away. Hey, Chip. Chip Willis says, how do you secure the zip while you stitch it in place? From Texas. Cool. How you doing? Uh, greetings from the UK. Uh, it's held in place with contact adhesive on the inside. So before putting the zip in, you roughen the leather, roughen the grain so that it accepts a strong contact adhesive. And then you put it very carefully down, nice and straight. And then that's kind of temporarily bonded together. I would never use uh, adhesives or glues or anything like that to permanently install any kind of zip without stitching, but that's all it's for is just really to hold everything in place before the stitching goes in it's very hard to keep keep things still and keep things secured and in place if you don't glue first can be done but it's a, it's a little bit more complicated so yeah essentially glue so nothing too complex you can use white glue something like uh, i guess you guys over there would call it like elmer's glue or school glue or something like that we call it pva over here um, when I say PVA, a lot of people from the States don't, 
have any idea of what I'm talking about, but that's you know poly polyvinyl acetate PVA. You can use it, but uh, contact adhesive really is the uh, the one to use. You don't have to clamp anything down. So this is goat skin leather using various thicknesses here. One of my favorite really for in interiors, for bags and for wallets. Goat skin is, uh, is definitely one of my favorites. There are a few other choice skins to use, but goat skin, very durable, very easy to work with, but it also has a really pleasing texture. It's like a micro texture. It's like cowhide, but much, much smaller. It's quite fine and it really works for detail work as well. Uh, I've used barge glue, uh, but it loads up on my needles. Yeah, barge glue is glue is um, uh, solvent-based contact adhesive. That's yeah, obviously very popular in the states. Everybody knows that. But uh, for those types of glue, although they're they're stick on contact, and as soon as you put the two parts together, when they touch dry and they go together, uh, they bond. But it's not it still has a lot more solvent to give, if you know what I mean. It takes a good 24 hours for that solvent to completely vacate the glue. Um, and in that time, if you attempt to stitch, sometimes, especially if you put on the glue quite thickly, uh, you can get gumming up with the needles and you're pulling it through and there's bits coming through with it. It's really annoying. Um, another one is if, if your glue has started to dry out, which happens very easily on things like barge glue, a lot of the solvents start to flash off, even with the lid closed. So it gets starts to get thicker and thicker and thicker as time goes on. And unless you have something to thin it down with, like naphtha or sometimes acetone, it really depends on the glue. Uh, you can get run into that issue if it's impossible to put it on thinly because it's become too thick. Uh, so in this in this case, for detail work, uh, I like to use this one, which is a uh, water-based contact adhesive. It takes a lot longer to, to dry out by itself. And you can just add water to it and, and mix it up and carry on using it. Or another alternative is just to buy solvent-based contact adhesives like this. Um, unless it's for a big project, you can put a little bit on and it really doesn't dry out on the tube. It can have that for a couple of years and it's still just as good, uh, which means you can apply it quite thinly. So see if those tips help you. Wait a little bit longer, switch your adhesive or uh, perhaps add some solvent just to thin it out a little bit, which I often find helps. I'm sure Barge will have uh, its own either solvent cleaner, which works the same or a, or a dilutant. Yeah, but uh, unless I really need the strength, most of the time I actually use solvent-based, uh, solvent-free contact adhesive. A little easier on the lungs. Nice to see you work online again, says Mary. Thank you very much. It's nice to be back. Uh, had a bit of a layoff uh, due to getting internet out where I am. I'm just outside of town, uh, which has been a pain, but I've just had new inter high-speed internet installed so I can uh, do more lives now, which is always fun. Uh, da -da -da -da. Flip those barge containers upside down in storage. Yeah, I do that. <laughs> Keeps the cap from uh, sealing closed. Yes, yeah. I still have uh, containers of, uh, it's not barge glue. We don't get barge over here. Um, uh, Evo stick. Yeah, this stuff but in the containers. Yeah, flip it upside down. I learned that a while ago and I haven't had any trouble since. But of course, every time you open it, it's, it starts to dry out pretty quickly. I have experimented with uh, uh, putting 
solvent-based contact adhesive in here. This is uh, LDPE, so low density polyethylene, uh, which does resist chemicals. So you can put them in those, and that's a Wilton, it's called a, what's it called? Wilty, Wilton candy making. It's designed for um, cake decorating, that kind of thing. It's a sauce bottle, essentially. And uh, yeah, you can put that upside down as well. In fact, <laughs> I still have it over here from when I was using solvent. I just uh, use this and then place that upside down and it never evaporates. <laughs> but I even had that. Good tip. Says Chip. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, feel free if you guys have any questions. As long as it's closely related to Leathercraft, I don't mind. <laughs> We're looking forward to getting this complete. This design has actually been asked for by quite a few students. The uh, zip wallet, because it is a, it can be a bit of a pain getting in a zip nice and accurately going around tight curves. I'm talking about the, uh, the actual, the body piece, this piece here. So uh, it was a highly requested video. So it's one of the videos that I produced due to the number of people asking. So I'm excited to see people make these when the course comes out. I agree about the solvents. I usually avoid them. Uh, they make a leather project smell like plastic. They do for a while, but eventually they lose, after a few days they lose, or they should do, uh, they lose smell completely. Uh, if it's not, I have something wrong with that solvent adhesive. It shouldn't have any smell whatsoever. We're going to move that up. First of all, I'm going to move this zip up. So I'll give you a closer look, guys, for those of you who haven't seen. So right now you can see there's a there's a big excess on here. Once the stitching is done, I will then be cutting this out so it'll be trimmed to size. So right now it doesn't look its best, but essentially that's how it works. So you open it out and you have a gusset here, which allows the pocket to expand. Then you have your grain leather on the inside on both sides. So there's no flesh side exposed at all. So this, this really is all about learning sequencing and the order of stitching. I'm gonna move that back a little bit more out of the way. Yeah, I mean, if I had a choice, I'd much rather use solvent adhesives because, you know, they're really strong. And as long as it's not too thick, you can be very accurate with it. But uh, it's, it's not the healthiest option to use. And plus, the thing I really like about this, and what I use is Evo Stick uh, solvent free contact adhesive, which is no longer made. So the tins that I have in, in storage over there are the, the last, you won't get them ever again, which is really annoying. I have to find a, a, a decent alternative. But the good thing about this particular one is you can leave, you can glue the two parts and you can leave them for up to eight hours and they will still come together and contact and adhere after eight hours. And that's something that you just can't do with uh, solvent based. And the great thing about that is you can, you can start gluing the panels and gussets on a really large bag, you know, uh, a weekender size bag. And you're not worrying about the contact adhesive 
drying out and no longer becoming strong enough to stick. So uh, it, it really does have its uses in that sense. But for absolute horsepower, a, a good solvent adhesive is, is hard to beat, you know, especially if you're gluing leather onto a non-porous surface. Uh, solvent free is, is not really going to do the job well. It'll do it, just not reliably. So almost at the end now, and I'll be stitching in the gusset side of it next. So the gusset is in two parts. There's a short side and there's a long side. And the short side gets stitched to the opening. And the long side gets stitched to the side of the pocket. And you have to make sure that you, get, you stitch it in the right sequence. <laughs> Otherwise you'll be stitching your pocket closed. Being very delicate with the stitching here. You notice I'm, I'm not really pulling the stitches very tight, just, just snug. Because on thin skins like this, it doesn't work well with tight stitching. And especially if you stitch too tightly with uh, on a zip. It makes the zip go wavy because the teeth won't compress, but if you stitch the leather and the, uh, the tape, the fabric at the side of the zip too tightly, it will want to compress and shorten. So you end up with this wavy look in the front of your zip, which you may have seen before. It's really not ideal. How thin is your lining scythe down? It depends which part. So there are some parts that are a millimeter thick, some parts that are 0.5, some parts that are 0.6. It really depends on it, um, which is why when people ask me, you know, what thickness do you make a wallet or what thickness do you make this bag or what thickness of leather for this? The answer really is it, it depends. It depends on what part you're working with. The lining on this is about 0 0.4, 0 0.5, but then it's glued to itself on the other side. So the total thickness is going to be near enough a millimeter. So turning the corner now, I'm actually stitching in this part here. So this is the gusset area. Press that down, squeeze that in. Again, going nice and lightly. We're going over the end of the zip tape now. I can feel I've gone onto the gusset now, so just going into it. So this is now going to permanently hold that little micro gusset in place. Because if we don't stitch that in, or if we just use glue, even if it's strong glue, eventually that will uh, that will begin to fail. So we want to give it that strength.
So a couple minutes left, guys, if you have any other questions or anything you want to know, uh, feel free to ask away. And if any of you are watching this and you are a beginner into Leathercraft and you're looking to learn how to hand stitch, uh, check out leathercraftmasterclass.com. I'll stick it in the description below so you can uh, check it out. There's a pop-up on, the, uh, on the homepage of the website. Uh, if you put your email address in, I'll send you a free video on how I hand stitch. So if you're brand new, this would be a good one to get. I do change them periodically, so make sure you uh, you get your copy sent to you. Absolutely free, obviously, so I'm not charging for it. But it will give you the knowledge to learn how to stitch leather. Few more stitches to go. Looking pretty good. I'm going to finish this off with a, a little back stitch at the end there. And then after that, we'll be trimming, uh, tapping down the stitches and making sure that that last little bit of thread gets tucked in just with a touch of white glue, touch of PVA. Of course, I'm using linen thread, so unlike polyester, I'm not using a lighter to, to melt it down because it linen thread burns, it doesn't melt. Do you have a standard thread you use? Yeah, the most most commonly I use uh, Phil Chinois. This is a Le Cable linen thread, French linen thread. That I'll sometimes use uh, something like this. This is Barber's. This is older than me. This uh, this is a vintage piece of thread, number 35. Back in the days when linen thread was better quality than it is today. Because uh, a lot of it was harvested by hand and sorted by hand. And uh, the staple of the thread but the actual fibers were longer. So you get more consistent thread, stronger thread, and less of those little nodes, the thick parts. So I do like a bit of vintage thread and it still holds. As long as it's been kept in a dry place, it's good as new, really. So yeah, uh, Phil Chumois or uh, Barber's Linen. I've used Somac before, which is another UK brand. It's just not very good though. All right, so last one going in. And then we can get this sorted and finished off. So I can put my uh, my bladed all down now. Uh, do you recommend linen thread over polyester thread? I don't. I don't recommend any kind of thread really. Uh, it it depends on what kind of look you're going for. If, you're, if you want a natural look, something with a bit more of a matte finish, then um, yeah, linen thread would be good. I tend to find uh, polyester thread is a little bit more shiny, but a wax polyester like this is, is slightly more matte finish. This is uh, Galasses or, no, or Artisan Sole, one of them. Wooter leather is another one that I use. If it's more of a... If I need a really strong seam in the sense that it might get wet over a prolonged period of time, then uh, for some things I'll switch to polyester thread for sure. But I, I like the, uh, the old school look and feel of working with linen thread. It's whatever makes you happy. If you really enjoy using polyester thread and it makes you happy, I would say use that. But for me, I like the kind of the, the look and the feel and the, the nod to the history of it. Uh, and that that's really, it's not really a practical reason that I use linen thread, although it is one of the strongest natural fibers that you can get. 
Um, I just, I just, I just like it. <laughs> and you tend to do better work when you enjoy what you're working with, whether it's leather, whether it's tools, whether it's thread. You know, we we start, we do this this craft with the heart, right? So we're not always making completely logical decisions all the time. So what I'm gonna do now, have a little look. So there's no cast on this. So probably very difficult to see anything there. And on the rear side, it's just a single seam and the stitches on this are actually quite straight because you're not gonna be, it's not gonna be seen. Oh, I already got it there. Apologies for the mess, there's a lot going on here. I'm one of those people, I tend to make a huge mess during the day and then uh, at the end of the day, I spend ages tidying everything up. Move the little slider out of the way. Good. Oh, that's nice. And now the stitches at the back are laying nice and flat, which means uh, anytime you put cash in there, it's not going to catch. So that's it. So the next thing is to trim this up. Uh, to size using the patterns that I supply with the course itself. So that goes over there. And then once that's done, it can then be placed inside the lining. So this has just been uh, reinforced. So that will then get cut out and put on there like that. On this side here, we're going to have some uh, card pockets. So these are going to be slimline card pockets. So very slim, very flat to the surface. And then once those two have been complete, this whole piece will then be installed inside the zip wallet and that will be the project complete. So not long until this next course comes out. So which is all about the how to make a leather zip wallet or zip pocket rather with a little micro gusset, as you can see there, all fully lined grain leather on each side, grain leather on the front and the rear of the gusset too. So no flesh side exposed on this project at all. Right, not that that makes the project that much better than any other style of project, but it does give uh, a more sophisticated look and nicer feel to it, I find anyway. Do, 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 do. Uh, I'm still quite fond of the Julius Cock, which has that ribbon-like design and a thick coat of beeswax, cool. Edward says, hello, Philippe, hello. Are you, Phil, Pep Leather, Pep Leather Lab says, Phil, are you using a wooden block as a support mold for the zip wallet? Yeah, it comes with its own former. So in the pattern pack, the PDF, which you print off, uh, I teach you how to make a former. You can make it from wood or you can make it from several layers of card. So if you don't have um, a table saw or a band saw or something to cut it out, you can actually use the template to make lots of layers of card and then build it up and then use that instead. So anyone can really do this, but yeah, it will have, and that's why I keep it inside there right now. Okay, so it helps keep its form before it's actually fully made. Uh, Anna says, is there a good book you would recommend for a beginner that goes over some of the finer points and underpinnings of skills? So much out there, I just, just glosses over the skills and concentrates on projects. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're more of a a learner from books, then a good one that I could recommend is uh, Valerie Michael's book. Uh, what's it called? The Leatherworking Guidebook, I think it is. Oh, it's, uh, just put in Valerie Michael into into um, Amazon, and you can find it there. There is a book that I sell as a, a PDF download. So it's an ebook on my website on Leathercraft Masterclass. That's one of my favorites. That's more of a vintage book and it has more of 
kind of an old school feel to it. I think it was originally published in 1934. Uh, that is technical leather craft. Uh, then other than my courses, of course, which go over the skills, but if you're interested in books, probably I'd, I'd say Valerie Michael's one. That was, I think that was the first, one of the first books that I bought back in the day, uh, before I really got into vintage, vintage, uh, leather craft books are my kind of thing. That's what I collect. Uh, that's what I love. Uh, Helena says, I'm just learning about the different threads and sizes. That's cool. If you go to my blog, leathercraftmasterclass.com, and then just click on blog, I do have, I can't remember the exact name of it. I've done a lot of blogs recently, um, but it's on leather uh, thread sizing and pricking iron size. So how to match thread with your pricking iron. So bigger pricking irons, bigger thread. I give you a bit of a cheat guide on there, but it goes into a bit more detail. So if you're just learning about different threads and sizes, uh, I would probably go on there. I do also do, I think there's a blog on polyester versus linen as well, but there's loads of stuff. If you're just beginning in leather craft, and especially if you like reading, go and check out the blog uh, because there's so much content on there that I produce every single month uh, over the last few years. Uh, absolute gold. I do love a good blog. <laughs> uh pep leather lab says i do find that when i like a size for the zip wallet i'll make a form from wood and store it yeah definitely uh the one i use is, is mdf as well uh which i just make zip out on the bandsaw which is pretty quick yeah but definitely if you're going to make more than one of them elena says thank you you are very welcome Guys, thank you for joining me. I know it's been a while since I've done a live, but I've sorted out my internet now, so I will be uh, doing more lives and more often. And as I said before, if you haven't got the free video, go to leathercraftmasterclass.com. When the pop-up comes in, enter your email address, and I will send you a free video going over the basics of how to hand stitch leather. Thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for joining in the conversation, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.